since perspectives of utility are used to increase and maintain domination, so there's a relationship to domination, right? That perspectives of utility. Perspectives of utility. <clears throat> What's the point of a perspective of utility? As we saw in um, note 12, they are designed, these perspectives of utility are willfully, intentionally designed to maintain and increase human constructs of dem uh, domination. Right? Right, designed, very important. Right? It's designed to maintain and increase Okay, so note 54 says, judgments of the exhausted are a source of domination. Note 12b says, this concept of, perspective of perspectives of utility are designed to maintain domination. Therefore, we're able to draw the conclusion, finally in number 3, that judgments of the exhausted are perspectives of utility. Right? That judgments of the exhausted are perspectives of utility, right? They're the same, right? These perspectives of utility, judgments become something that is useful. It becomes a tool with which I can dominate. And I'll explain this in a, in a little bit, right? So the conclusion that we can draw from here is that judgments of the are perspectives So the conclusion that we can draw here is that um, judgments of the exhausted are perspectives of utility. I'm going to go through the argument um, a little slower and then we'll look at further implications. The first point to recognize is we're talking about sort of the source, the origin of dominion, domination of other human beings. How does this conceptual and this is a huge problematic, right, especially in the area of conflict resolution. How is it that we come to talk about oppression and domination of others? The source, according to Nietzsche, um, with respect to this domination, is a result of judgments of the exhausted. How do we talk about the exhausted? We recognize that the exhausted come as a consequence of a diminution, uh, uh, an attempt to diminish, um, a diminution of value, right? They decrease and Nietzsche even says they're harmful. The act of exhaustion is a harmful act. They pull and suck, if you will, the life out of the value, right? This is sort of this inherent nihilism. They, they because of their attempt to posit the highest um, value, which then devalues itself, they suck the life out of value. Value becomes meaningless. As we'll see in a little bit, it's not the case that value is meaningless, but value is meaningless insofar as you ascribe to a modern worldview. And we talked about the equivocation between um, the world of existence and the modern world. The modern world is a consequence for Nietzsche, for um, the source of pessimism. The world of existence is not a source. And I think I said this, if I'm not mistaken, in, I think I want to say it's like video 30 or 34, between 30 and 34, I discussed this in, in more detail of this series. What ends up happening is benefactors make contributions to value and exhausted, those exhausted parties, they, they detract from value. It's this act of exhaustion that they then set up a system of judgments. You ought to, you must, you will, you will follow what we do. What is it that they can possibly contribute? Nothing more than this, this same toxicity of value. And we saw this in um, and now you, you really have to be following along in the videos to, to be able to follow them because I'm, it's going to get a little bit more complicated. It has to get more complicated as we go along. There won't be so much ghetto philosophy as really abstract stuff. Remember when we talked about the relationship between decadence and anti-biology? We said that we go from decadence. Decadence informs this sort of pseudo-scientific ideal norm. That norm influences social ideals. That social ideal informs social judgments, right? Sociological judgments. It's the judgments that serve as a consequence that tell us what we must and what we ought to do. This judgment becomes an act of domination. And the example that I gave 
was blue hair, blue a uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, right? And we trace that whole theoretic from the concept of decadence to the anti-biological claim, right? So the blonde hair, blue eyes argument is an argument that arrives out of a judgment of the exhausted, and we saw sociolo sociologically and pseudo scientifically how we came to use this concept as a tool of domination. Okay, if that's okay, then we couple that concept in note 54 with the concept that we got before in note 12b, a perspective of utility. And the key word here is utility. When you think of something being a utility, you look at it as, um, I don't want to use the Heideggerian ready-to-hand ready to sort of language because we're not there yet, but you think of something being um, useful, right? It's an act of utility if I can use it for my own ends. It is a process of me directing my intent through it, right? So that it in and of itself, whatever this thing is, specifically the system of domination, only has meaning in so far, and here's a, this is very important, right? The system of domination only has meaning in so far as those in control of the system, the exhausted, those in control of the system, use the system to maintain an act of domination. Right? I'll say that again. It only has meaning, a system of domination, and think about this, I mean, it, logically it makes sense, right? A system of domination only has meaning in so far as those in control of the system, the exhausted, use it to create a structure of domination, right? So that I am controlling, I am dominating other human beings through the implementation of this system, right? This perspective of utility, this is the quote from Nietzsche, Perspective of utility are designed to maintain and increase domination. So what ends up happening is, theoretically, you have something like this, right? Theoretically, and this is all conceptual. This is not that this happened at a table or at a meeting, which isn't to deny that it could. But you have the exhausted. The exhausted want to maintain control. maintain power and control. And we talked about how um, power, this, I think this was in 12A, 12A or 12B, where we talked about how power is utilized to control others, right? I then use this power to oppress another. But it can't just be a single act of oppression. I need to create a system of oppression. Right? This needs to be systematized. To give you a, a contemporary example of a systematized structure of oppression, you can look at um, 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 Johann Galtung's um, theory of structural violence as an example. As an example, right? Structural violence is a systematized process of oppression, right? Used by those who sort of diminished value from the world, and the value of human life has been diminished, right? I no longer look at all human beings as on a same sort of human rights equality sense. I think that some are more privileged and less privileged than others. I create a system in order to maintain their oppression. The technical term, as an example of this system, would be the system of structural violence. Structural violence is put in place as a system to oppress others, and thus the system Structural violence becomes a utility to those in control, right? It becomes a tool in a toolkit of oppression that I can use to oppress others. And the more, even more concrete example is, I've never already lectured on this, is the relationship between um, um, property tax and educational, um, educational accessibility. The more property tax you pay, the, the greater educational accessibility you have. The less property tax you pay, the less educational accessibility you have. This is obviously um, implemented as a form of control and oppression, and it is undeniably a form of structural violence. So this idea of utility comes as a, a willful, intentional consequence in an attempt to oppress, so that we can make the final claim then that judgments of the exhausted are in fact perspectives of utility used by